everyone and welcome to our workshop for today. We're really excited that you're going to be joining us here today. My name is Dorima Hamilton and I'm the executive director of Ideal CDC and I just want to welcome all of you that are joining us. Um, we're really excited for today's topic where we'll be talking about credit specifically for our small business owners and lending. I know a lot of you have reached out to us in the last couple of months and especially as the PPP loans were released and you found yourself in a, you know, in a in an uncomfortable position, a bad position, just because like you didn't have your credit score, you didn't have a business account, you didn't understand the process. And so many of you guys have asked us to reach out to someone that can provide you more guidance and perhaps answer more of those questions that you have as it relates to your credit and how to establish those habits that can help you along that process. So we're really excited that our friends are going to be joining us again from HSBC. I know a lot of you really appreciate when they come out and provide this information for us. I'm very grateful for them and our relationship that we have with them. They've been super awesome. We just finished up our Spanish version of this workshop. So if you know someone that can get the, that needs this information, they perhaps feel more comfortable or better understand Spanish, feel free to share that. It's free for everybody. Uh, we do this so that you guys are successful, you can succeed and reach your goals as a business owner. So 
Before we get started, I just remind you, want to remind you guys all of a couple housekeeping items. So as we do with all of our workshops, please leave us down below in the comments what your questions are in regards to this topic. And we will do our best to answer all the questions that come in at the end of the workshop. And sometimes we take a pause in between to answer some of those questions. So if we don't get to them right away, don't worry, we will try to get to them at some point in this workshop. Um, last thing, please share this workshop. If you know perhaps maybe one of your friends that isn't here today that you think this will be beneficial for them, just here, hit share, share it with them or tag them in the comment below. That way this workshop gets to them right away. Um, but with that, I want to welcome Jimmy um, and Gareth and that is going to be joining us here today from HSBC that's going to be bringing the topic to us today. So welcome guys. Thank you so much for joining. We're really excited to have you here today. Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Jimmy. I am a business relationship manager at HSBC and let me introduce you to Nick. Hey guys, my name is Nick Williamson, uh, Business Relationship Manager here at HSBC as well. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. So we're going to start um, talking about how to obtain business credit, business credit today. So this is the very popular topic that everybody has been wondering. So today we're gonna to be here to, just to give you the ABCs of how to obtain business credit history, a little about what you need to do, so as we go along the way, please feel free to ask questions, but just a little bit about myself. I've been in banking for about 16 years. I've been in business banking uh, half that time where I've helped many businesses obtain uh, business credit along the way. So anywhere from the $100,000 business all the way up to the $5 million businesses. So everybody has started from somewhere. So I will be glad to answer any questions that you might have today. Uh, Nick, how about yourself? Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, guys, I've been uh, in banking actually for about 10 years now. Uh, a lot of the time in the retail space as a branch manager for about six of those eight, uh, 10 years, um, the remaining about in, in uh, business. And uh, my passion really is around helping business owners understand how to build their business correctly, how to uh, improve their business and how to profit from their business. Uh, and business lending is one of those things that are very essential on understanding how to grow your business the right way uh, and leveraging the tools that you have available to you. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to leverage those tools. Perfect. Thank you. So let's get started. What is business uh, credit? Credit is just another word for loan. When a business enters into an agreement to borrow money from another entity, which is the lender, the business is using credit. Many different credit options are available to businesses, including business credit cards, lines of credit, revolving credit, and term loans. Determining the types of credit that's best for you involves assessing whether you need your needs are short or long-term, the amount needed, and many other factors. So a lot of people are looking for credit for various reasons. So we'll just start with a couple of them. Assisting with startup costs. So what would be a startup cost? Maybe you are opening up a retail store and you need to do renovations and you need money for the build out. So you need to remodel the store. Um, equip purchasing new equipment. Maybe you need to buy an oven or refrigerator for your business. Or even if we get more complicated, you need to buy a forklift or a truck to move your equipment around and to operate your business. Another reason for credit is to acquire inventory. Inventory is maybe if you are selling t-shirts, you need to have the money to buy the t-shirts to make your product and then also to, um, to, to sell off your products. Uh, other stuff includes merchandise or any type of material that you would need in order to get your business going. The next thing, Covering cash flow deficits. So for example, you need to make payroll or you need to bridge the gap when the time between you get paid until, uh, the, until the customer pays you back. So if you offer terms like net 30 days so, uh, to your customers, so in between the first 30 days, you need, to get, you need to continue to run your business and then the line of credit will help you supplement 
that those costs until your customers pay you. So uh, next thing is going to be building credit history. So a lot of startup businesses don't have any credit history yet. So maybe you need to put a deposit down of maybe a thousand dollars to a secured credit card in order to get your business running. So then you can uh, establish some business credit history. Uh, you would put some money down. We would give you a, a credit card per se, and then you would run. You would use that credit card and use and purchase payback every month in order to build that credit history. And you just wash, rinse, and repeat until you have a long-term history with the bank. Do I have any questions on what uses a credit um, history would be? Hi, Jimmy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Yes, great. So the the question as it relates to this that came in is where can one obtain their credit score for their business credit? So we have several avenues. Uh, one would be called the Dun and Bradstreet. Uh, what else, Nick? What else do are we using these days besides Dun and Bradstreet? Yeah, Jimmy, uh, well, we're going to go over that in a couple slides from now, but uh, Dun & Bradstreet and also I believe it's Equifax that we use as well. Okay. Uh, but on that slide, it will list those names. And I uh, don't know if I can highlight it. I don't think I can highlight on this, uh, but you can see it on that page once we get there. I'll point it out to you guys so you can take note of it. Um, and it also talks about the range of the credit score as well for business. Okay, uh, we'll get to that point. What other questions okay. do we have regarding right the uses of credit? As of right now, that is it. Okay, not a problem. We'll continue to the next slide. All right, thank you. So what criteria do lenders use when approving a loan application? So I'm pretty sure everybody knows what the five C's are, but we're gonna go over it real quick just to give everybody a refresher on what the bank is looking for. So lenders are focused on applicants' credit, credit worthiness or their ability to repay the amount that they wish to borrow. Credit worthiness is evaluated through the five C's. Research shows that relationship building can have an impact on business securing credit. Consider visiting a firm or financial institution in person to allow them to get to know you and your business before applying for business credit. So let's go with the first one, capacity. Capacity is your current and your future ability to repay your loan based on income, revenue, and future financial projections. The next one, character. Character refers to your history of develop, delivering on financial commitments. And then our next one, collateral. Collateral includes assets belonging to you that the lenders can seize if you default on your loan. Capital. Capital is any funds that you have personally invested in your business and the value of your business assets versus its liability. And then conditions. Conditions covers external factors such as state of the industry and economy, as well as the purpose of the loan. So what criteria do lenders use when approving loan applications? Uh, I'm gonna just talk about conditions right now and the fact that we're in a pandemic and these economic conditions have been very hard for, for uh, people to lend money or banks to consider lending money out. So, you know, being out of a job, or business is not running. Uh, these are certain economic conditions that have been has affected the, the, the bank and how we lend out money to our customers. Uh, another one I want to talk about is collateral. Collateral, you know, do you have any skin in the game? What do you have to offer of collateral if you do not, if you're not able to make payments? So do you have anything that the bank can take or can use? as leverage in, in case that you're not able to pay. Uh, capital, capital is anything, do you have any, are you willing to put any money, uh, a down payment into whatever that you're trying to fund? So we wanna make sure that you have skin in the game. And also I wanna go back to capacity. Capacity is talk, talks about, do you have the ability to make payments for this loan? So are you in over your head? And next, last but not least, character. Do you have a history of making uh, payments as promised? Or do you have a history of making uh, late payments or anything like that? So at the end of the day, the five C's is a cumulative uh, 
formula that the banks looks at, and then we determine if you are credit worthy and to make these uh, to make to borrow money from the bank. So, with that said, do I have any questions regarding any of these five C's? Yeah. Yes, I actually do have a question. So, someone asked, "I obtained a title loan, but I had I've already paid it off. Will this impact my score negatively?" Well, title loans typically, if you're able to pay it back, it should show um, paid paid. Um, what's the word, Nick? Paid paid in full as as promised. So that That's should correct. only be yeah. Thank you. That should only boost your credit up. That should not uh, that, that should not uh, lower your score. The only time it will lower your score is say for example you have a credit card since college, and then you all of a sudden for whatever reason you you uh, close off the card. So then, by closing that card off, will uh, it will that, that's the card that shows uh, that you have the longest credit standing history with any any bank. So it's not a good idea to close the longest standing credit uh, account that you have. Mm. Other questions? Yes. Uh, one other question is in regards to collateral. If I put something down for collateral with a loan, but halfway through the loan, I no longer have that item or the item that I put for collateral, what do I need to do? Is that something that will affect my loan? Uh, if you don't have that collateral anymore, yes, it could affect your loan because if you were to default, then the bank would not have your, that collateral to, to, you know, to, to collect on. So that could potentially be an issue, but then that's, that should be a one-off and you should talk to your, your banker or your financial advisor on how to proceed with that. Okay, thank you. Those are the only questions right now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, with that said, I'm gonna pass it on to Nick where he's gonna talk about the next couple of slides. Excellent, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, and great information about that, guys. So hopefully you guys are taking notes on this. Um, now we're gonna talk about what information might a lender use to determine my credit worthiness. We talked about what lenders look at or consider in regards to actually lending cash or money to a business. Now we're gonna talk about the documentation and information that a, a lender does need in order to actually look at uh, the worthiness of a, of a, of a borrower. Um, so when you're applying for a business loan, the lender, let me actually move my screen up here. Sorry, give me a second here. There you go. Uh, the lender will request information that they can use to access your credit worthiness. Different lenders will re uh, request different documentation uh, and some lenders actually require much more information than others. Um, so for example, on that one, if you're going directly to an, the SBA or you're going the SBA route with a lender, uh, there will be some more documentation that will be needed uh, in, in addition to the normal or the minimum uh, requirements that they need for documentation. Uh, lots of times keep in mind as well, audited financial statements uh, provide much more assurance of your company's financial health, uh, but the auditing auditing process can be lengthy and expensive. Uh, so if you are looking at, if you have uh, business financials that are audited through a CPA, uh, specifically that, um, that is actually a lot better of a, of a assurance for lenders to look at and it makes it easier for them to actually look at the real credit worthiness of your business. On the left side here, it talks about a list of information that lenders may ask uh, you to provide when going through these, uh, this process. Number one is a business plan. This specifically is mainly for us, for example, looking at uh, if you're a startup business, what's your plan with the business? What do you look at? What are you, what are you going to be doing? What do you need the money for? Um, how is it going to benefit your business? Uh, financial statements, and that could be, financial statements could be anything from this current year. So 2021, I know it's barely, you know, pretty fresh, but we'll still look at uh, what your year so far is actually looking at and how you're doing. Some statements, some uh, financial uh, statements we'll need around that is a business plan around, uh, sorry, uh, your income statement. So how much income have your, has your business uh, made so far? Um, how much is your net income currently for the year? Uh, and then in addition to that, a balance sheet. So looking at the business specifically, what assets does the business have and what liabilities does the business have? Uh, revenue and sales figures. Again, uh, projections can be a, in, fall into this bucket. So if you're a brand new startup business, we want to know what you project the business will make over the next couple or few years. 
um, and, and explaining to us why you, how you came up with that figure. Uh, this actually is a big part because lenders look at what do you feel your industry can make and how much your business is going to make of that. Um, in addition to that, personal credit reports and scores, business credit report and scores. So I know, Jimmy, uh, we had a question earlier about uh, what credit bureau or what, what uh, bureaus look at, you can look at for your business credit score. Um, don't only look at your business credit score and how your business is doing credit wise. Look at your own personal self as well. A lot of times, if not every time, a lender will look at not only the business credit, but also the owner's personal credit. Sometimes the business credit is so new, it doesn't have any credit, we cannot look at anything about that. So we, we go then to the owner of the business and we take into account their personal credit information and report and score. So that is very important as well. Uh, if the business cannot qualify in a sense uh, with their own, their own credit, then we will go to your credit um, and look at that as well. Uh, when, we, when we talk about that is we actually talk about that as a, a global cash flow. We want to know, obviously, is the business able to have a, a good positive cash flow and make money uh, as far as a net income is concerned? But also, if we can't use just that, we'll go to the personal side and look at can the, the personal side make up for the, uh, the lack of uh, income on the business side? So that is something you guys want to always work on as well as your personal credit. Um, after that, income tax returns. So this will be for the business and the personal side as well. If we're, if we're using the, the personal credit report and score, we also will be using the personal tax returns uh, and personal income of you as the owner. Uh, so this, when it comes to income tax returns, we want to look at your, uh, obviously your tax returns. It depends how many years we want you to provide as a lender. It depends on how much you're actually uh, applying for. Um, so when you go and you're looking for a loan uh, for your business, depending on the amount you're requesting as a loan uh, or a line of credit, they will it will depend and make a difference on how many years of tax returns they want for your business. Either one, two, three, typically is the, the amounts that they actually ask for. Uh, bank statements. Um, if you're going to a lender where you don't have your current business account, they'll ask for bank statements. They want to know how the cash flow is looking in your in your accounts. How is the business producing? Uh, how well are you able to have a net ca uh, a, a positive cash flow uh, in the business account? Resumes for you and the business principal, so business owners. So uh, when you apply for a business loan and you're a brand new business uh, and you're trying to get a startup loan to buy a business or to start your loan, your business, uh, we will look at and request a resume or a explanation of history uh, of yourself and any other owner you have on that business. We want to know where your expertise comes in into play with this business you're starting do you have any history of in that industry, uh, any experience in the industry? A uh, list of assets can be used as collateral. So I know Jimmy talked about collateral as one of the five C's. Uh, collateral can be used uh, in, in regards to the lending. Um, so I know Jimmy talked about, uh, you know, using uh, buildings or using uh, a car, for example, or a truck for your business. We'll use that as collateral to help approve a loan as well. Uh, in e legal documentation. So for example, uh, I had a client that I helped with a loan. Uh, actually, it was a line of credit uh, startup business. Um, Gareth was actually involved in this one as well. So Gareth's on here, our manager. Uh, but this business didn't have very much uh, business credit and was a startup business. Um, but he had a, uh, a specific license for his business and what he did. Uh, and he had government contracts with the state of California. Uh, those legal documents really do help uh, as far as looking at a as a lender looking at being able to lend money to a, a business. Um, so that was actually able for us to know that this business will be able to make this much of money from uh, their contracts they have. They have this specific license they have, um, and we were able to get that done for our client. Uh, it was a great success story. Um, so keep in mind when you do have legal documents that way, patents patents on your products. Uh, leases or licenses, you, we want you to tell us those things. That will be very beneficial in helping us understand, again, if you're credit worthy. So next slide, Jimmy. Actually, when we go to this next slide, does anyone have any questions on that? Yes, actually, I have quite a, I have a few questions. Okay, good. <laughs> very go for good it. information. No. Um, so in regards to the loans, do you 
from your bank, do you have a place where someone can get the different criteria that you're looking for from a marketing loan to perhaps maybe an equipment loan? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, this on the left side here of the page is going to be a generalization of, of things we might ask for as a lender. Okay. Each lender will have their specific layout of documents or, or financials they want. Um, so whenever you go, for example, if you come to our bank or any other bank as a lender, we're going to give you something you can definitely look on online for uh, and compare what yours looks like to what you see online. And you can make some tweaks that way too. The business plan really is only for us to know, do you know what it takes to make your business successful? What plans do you have in place to make it successful? What your steps are in grow the, growing the business? That's what we're looking for in the business plan is understanding how you're going to continue to grow your business and make it successful. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And that's very true. I know there's a lot of organizations that also work with the business owners themselves and help you develop that business plan so you can better speak to it and have that story, right? right. Um, and uh, another question, I, l last two questions in, on this subject is, do business reviews help me with my business loan process? Like having reviews, I don't know if on Yelp or Facebook or Google, but do that. Help. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like positive reviews or negative yeah. reviews. I get yeah. it. <laughs> uh, it does not help us with the lending piece. We, we okay. don't care. That's very subject, subjectal. Yeah. Is that, is that the word? Yeah, that's <laughs> subjective. very true. <laughs> it's a very subjective uh, of comments online yeah. for people giving reviews. Uh, I mean, we, we typically don't do that. We don't take into account, oh, this person had a horrible review online. <laughs> that that's that's not our business we don't do that we care more about how the business is looking financially how it's going to continue to grow and how we can help okay great but and, nick with that said we yes. do look at negative news stories to see what kind of negative news comes up with that <laughs> right. because that is a reputational risk yes good point jimmy so yeah uh in regards to negative news uh <laughs> when it comes to like Yelp or Google reviews, those are completely separate, but it, we, we do look at uh, reviews of the business as far as negative news of anything, you know, pretty terribly bad about uh, right. the business or the owners of the business, uh, if they have ties with certain things. I don't know how, if we can explain more than that, Jimmy. What yeah, hey, think? Nick, it's Gareth. Let, let, uh, let me jump in there. Yeah, so, Thanks, we, so with financial institutions, I mean, it's normal during an onboarding process that, um, uh, for example, WorldCheck is a company that some lenders use. It's simply a method of seeing what's in the public domain. So, yeah. you know, has the business had any regulatory, any fine, any sort of um, issues with law enforcement, anything that's in the in that's verifiable and in the public um, domain, um, you know, reviews, you know, on Facebook and Yelp. I mean, to next point, they are very subjective and right. um, don't carry any legal weight. Um, uh, it's only anything that would be uh, detrimental that uh, would be in the public domain from, as I say, you know, regulatory, legal, tax, financial. That's what um, institutions would look at. But that also right. forms part of general onboarding process. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Gareth, for jumping in there. Uh, what I would add in that as well is uh, your business credit uh, mm -hmm. report. That could also be it might have some negative things on there about foreclosures or uh, mm. collection items, things like that as well. Those do affect uh, the lendability. Uh, when it goes back to our credit worthiness, right? Or our five C's of credit, yeah. those come into play as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And then the last question that I have on this is you mentioned um, contracts. Do purchase orders also count as something that I can use to prove that I'm able to fulfill orders or have some sort of demand? Yeah, you know, uh, that's a great question. I always ask a client who's in industries that have POs or purchase orders okay. um, to, to provide it to us because that's something that we can tangibly look at yeah. and see that there is a need. Right. You know, uh, Jimmy also talked about the cash flow deficit. Um, if you have, uh, if you're, you have a product, you have to ship out a certain day, but you're not going to get paid for 30 or 60 days from then, we still want to see the purchase order to show that that is a real um, issue that you have going on that we can help with. Um, sometimes a purchase order can show that you will be making a certain amount of money on that purchase order uh, in compared to what you've spent for it. So I would say if you have it, 
go ahead and provide it because it's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Those are the only questions that I have so far. I appreciate you all taking the time to answer those. Yeah, definitely. Those are some great questions. So keep those coming, guys. Hey, Nick, I wanted to also reemphasize the personal credit reports and scores. Those are important because at the end of the day, uh, for in the small business realm, personal credit is going to be because we're going to be you're going to be personally guaranteeing the loan. If the business, for whatever reason, it does not work and goes out of business, you are still financially liable for it. So I just want to make sure that personal guarantee, personal uh, scores is also very important. That's a good point there, Jimmy. Thanks for, for sharing that. Uh, and, and there's a, there is a uh, I would say, a myth that goes on uh, in, with business owners. They feel that, well, my business is, is a corporation or my business is an LLC. I'm not an owner of the LLC. I'm just a member. I'm not liable. So there's part truth to that, but there's also... Uh, not truth there when it comes to lending. You still ultimately own that business. You are still the guarantor or liable for that business loan. So we do look at personal credit and we will pull personal credit uh, as well. So thanks for sharing that, Jimmy. Okay, we can go to the next slide here. Uh, again, continuing on uh, business credit. So what is business credit score? Uh, lenders pr will probably look at both your personal credit score and your business credit score. That, like we just said, guys, uh, when evaluating your application, your credit score provides lenders with a rating that reflects your credit worthiness. The higher the number, the more likely you are to pay back your loan on time. Your personal credit score can be calculated by different organizations such as FICO and is typically a numeric value between 300 and 850. Your business credit score is calculated differently and also by different businesses. Popular ones are Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax. Values may range from zero up to 992, depending on the business. If your company has never applied for credit, you may not have a business score. Starting a positive credit, uh, credit history may make it easier to obtain higher lines of credit and could even lower insurance po policy rates. So guys, as you can tell, there is some, uh, some, uh, some I can't talk right now. Uh, there, there is similarities between business credit score and the personal one. Uh, there are both numeric values. Uh, the business range is much larger because there are different types of entities and they all fall under different categories when it comes to a business credit score. Uh, but the personal credit score is very important as well. Uh, and then right there where it talks about your business credit score, I'm not sure if you can hover around there, Jimmy, where it talks about the popular uh, business uh, credit bureaus right there. So the popular ones, like we said, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian is one I actually, I, I forgot about, but there it is, and Equifax. TransUnion, so you is, TransUnion is, is another um, big, big one of the big three. Yeah, TransUnion as well. Um, when it comes to personal, of course, we don't. We have Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Uh, the business most popular ones are those three, with an addition of uh, TransUnion. I know we had a question about this, about this earlier. I'm not sure if there's any questions about this page currently. Uh, yes, I have one question about that about credit scores. If two okay. people are applying for a business loan. Will the interest be determined by the lowest, the lowest credit score or the highest credit score? That's a great question. <laughs> um, so typically, the the interest rate is is factored by a number of different things. So it could be your net income, it could be uh, your business, it could uh, you know how long you've been in business, it could be the credit score. But typically, when it comes to the credit score, I know uh, we look at both credit score, if there was two or more partners, we look at all the credit scores combined, but I believe we do go by as a lender, the highest credit score. Um, a lot of times when you say, for example, on the personal side, if you do a personal car loan, right? You wanna buy a car, but your score is really low and you're not gonna get a good enough uh, interest rate or even a good term, you can have a co-signer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that co-signer will, will can take their income and their uh, credit score into account. And that can help lower that interest rate or help be able to give you that loan. Um, so when it comes to business, it does work the same way. Okay, great. 
Um, and then the last question in regards to a loan with um, an, your other partner that's going to be applying for the loan. Do both business owners have to be on the loan? Um, this person is saying like my my call, my partner doesn't have the best credit score, but we need a loan for our business. Do I have to add him to the loan or can it just be me? So that's a great question. Now, keep this in mind as well. If you have a uh, an owner of a business that is 1% or sorry, anything over 0%, hmm. uh, it ne they need to be on that loan as well. They need to okay. be listed as uh, a co-borrower. Um, when it comes to that co-borrower or co-owner of yours who does not have the greatest credit, and you guys actually, if you guys apply together, which you should, because you have to apply with everyone who is an owner of the business, mm -hmm. um, if you apply and you get the loan, that's actually only going to help their credit. Okay. So um, yes, you do. Uh, if you have a, a partner who's 50-50, 60-40, uh, anything like that, you have to have every owner of the business on that lending. Okay. Okay, great. Those are the only two questions that I have so far on that. Thank you. Excellent. All right, we can go to the next page, Jimmy. Okay, uh, where can I get credit? So banks and credit unions are the traditional sources for small business loans, but they aren't the only lenders. Alternative lenders are becoming more mainstream and offer flexible credit options that fit the needs of many small business owners. Some examples of alternative lenders include online lenders, such as a peer-to-peer -peer or P2P, uh, and business-to-business -business or B2B lending. Tradition, uh, both traditional lenders and alternative lenders have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so guys, don't only think that there's you know, banks and credit unions who give lending. There are options out there as well. Uh, but again, there's advantages to both and there's disadvantages. So you have to weigh the options of what really is the most beneficial for you and your business uh, that's gonna to continue to make you and your business profitable and grow. Okay, uh, next slide there, Jimmy. Uh, I believe this is you, right, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. So what should I look at when comparing loans? I know that Dick has given you a lot of information on whether to go with a bank or traditional lending or alternative lending such as online or peer-to-peer. -peer. So choosing a lender and credit type that best meets your funding needs is really important, but your research shouldn't end there. Be sure to review the following credit terms before signing on that dotted line. So I'm gonna go over a few things that you should be aware of when you are committing to a business loan. So the first one, other fees. Other fees may be attached to credit in addition to an interest rate. These could include origination fees, underwriting fees, or closing costs. The APR, or the annual percentage rate, is, cal is calculated with these fees in mind. Uh, next one, interest rates. The interest rates on business credit vary greatly by type and lender, with rates from as low as 2.5% to as high as 100%. And when a one and when a one percent difference in interest rate could save you thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, this should be a top consideration. Uh, next one: term and restrictions. Review all the fine print in the contract and make sure you're comfortable with all the terms and restrictions set by the lenders. So maybe a term and the restriction could be uh, early early payoff, or if you have a late payment, it could increase your interest to the default rate of 25, 30, or even 40%. So you have to read the between the fine lines to make sure there's no special terms and conditions or any restrictions uh, for these loans. So any questions with these first three, um, first three items? Yes, actually. Um, one question that I have right now is once approved for the loan, how long do I have to decide to review the paperwork before I sign the loan? Well, typically the bank will give you an X amount of days for you to determine. So it just depends on what's stated on, on the terms and conditions. Okay, awesome. And then how many lenders would you suggest one visits before making a decision on the type of loan or who they decide to go with? Uh, I typically will go with either two or three lenders just to see what their terms and conditions are, so interest rates, 
and it's a cumulative package of what they can offer me. So you, you are allowed to inquire with multiple lenders and uh, within a certain time frame, so it doesn't impact your credit score. Okay. Hey, Jamie, it's Gareth. Let me let me just yes. jump in there. I think what's also worth emphasizing as well is, I mean, interest rate is obviously important, but it's the overall sort of package of, of what your lender is providing you is because obviously, you know, you can source it directly online, but if you're dealing with sort of uh, an institution uh, or a credit union whereby you're actually dealing with, with an individual, it's the sort of the, the other services that that, um, that that lender can provide. So, um, you know, I, I would caution on, you know, interest rate is important, but but looking at the overall sort of service that your um, that the provider is going to be giving you. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, I think that's very true. Um, and I think we talked about that in the last workshop they mentioned. You want to make sure that you feel important, you feel welcome, they understand your business, are following up with you, and that service can go a long way, especially as we saw during the pandemic, how that was very much needed, having that established relationship with that local bank. Um, uh, another question that I have in regards to the loan process, is it safe to submit an inquiry online for a business loan? These days, most things are done via on the internet. Yeah. So just make sure your computer is not hacked. <laughs> um, I, I think it's pretty yeah. safe these days. Just uh, don't, don't, enter your password where you're not supposed to enter yeah. or don't fall for the phishing schemes. Mm -hmm. I think you should be fine. Yes. Yeah. And I would say try to do it in a safe place, like probably not go to your local Starbucks and use their internet where perhaps it might, might be hacked um, since you are going to be providing personal information. And then the last question is, am I able to ask my lender to go over some of the terminology that I perhaps may not understand? when it comes to my loan? Uh, definitely. So the person that you're working with should be able to break down what everything means and should not be using bank terms like APR, APY, mm. or anything like that. So if you don't understand, if you don't understand what you're talking about, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to say, hey, what does this mean? Can you yeah. break it down in simple English? Right. Okay, great. All right. Those are the only questions right now. Thank you, guys. Perfect. Uh, the next two things I want to talk about is uh, our first one. Next one is going to be collateral. Secured loans requires borrowers to pledge an asset as collateral, which the lender can seize in you, if you default on the loan. Be very certain you are willing to risk the loss of whatever asset you pledge and make sure you understand the terms of seizure. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you use your, your car as a collateral in case you don't pay back the loan. So, you know, the bank has the ability, if, if you default for whatever reason, the bank will has the right to take the car away from you and sell it for whatever it's worth in order so, so the bank will be, uh, become as whole as possible. So be sure that whatever you use and ask collateral that you're willing to give that up in case that you do not follow up on your, your uh, obligation. Uh, also, the down payments. Sometimes a lender requires a down payment on the loan. Be sure that you have the capital needed to cover this requirement. So for example, you need, in, as a term of the loan, you need to put 20% down payment in order for us, for the bank to, to offer you 80% of financing. Uh, Gareth, uh, did you want to explain the lien to them? Yeah, hey, thanks, Jimmy. So what we mean by collateral and, and as to how the collateral is actually um, taken, because uh, I think there was a question earlier about what, you, what if you don't have the asset anymore. Um, lenders will typically take a lien on an asset. So a good example of that is, 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 for example, a mortgage. So a mortgage will be a lien against the property. The property can't be sold um, uh, until that... Um, uh, that debt is repaid. The same as when you buy a vehicle. So if you finance a vehicle, the title is obviously taken, um, uh, the, the, the lien is against the title. So uh, to the question earlier about, you know, disposing of that collateral, I don't have it anymore. Um, 
uh, if there is a first lien put against a, an asset, then if you're looking to, you know, to sort of, you know, sell that, then uh, invariably that would come up on a on a search. So it's something called a UCC filing uh, is how liens can be established. And these are all matters of public record. So liens can be um, held by financial institutions, but also by the SBA, the Small Business uh, Administration. Any questions regarding collateral or down payments? Uh, no, no questions right now. Okay, very good. Let's go on. So what should I know about interest? Even interest rates that seem low can end up costing a business a lot of money over time. This is why it's important to understand the difficult, different type of interest rates and how they are calculated. Interest is calculated as a percentage of the amount borrowed and for businesses is usually compounded, while simple interest is calculated using only the principal. Compound interest is calculated using the principal and any outstanding interest. So for example, uh, you need to understand what compound and simple interest is because for example, if you happen to borrow $10,000 to purchase a truck for your business, but then the interest is super high, at the end of the day, you might be paying five, six, seven, or $8,000 of interest over time because you wanted a lower, uh, lower payment versus paying a higher payment. So at the end of the day, you, you realize, wow, I just paid another car just to get this loan. I paid over $20,000 interest when the car was only $10,000. So these are some things that you should understand about interest rate and how it affects you down the line. Uh, any questions regarding how interest is calculated? Uh, no, there aren't any questions on that right now. Yeah. Okay, very good. We can check it down the line. And Nick, is this me or you? I'm not sure, Jim. I don't know what page this is. I can't see the page number. <laughs> okay, no problem. Anyways, uh, how do I know how much I can borrow? Lenders will only allow you to borrow an amount they believe you are capable of repaying. So this goes back to your, the capacity part I, I, I spoke about earlier. Many use a formula called the debt service coverage ratio to determine this amount. Using the debt service ratio prior to applying for a loan uh, for a credit can help you figure out a loan amount to request that is within your company's means. So generally, lenders are looking for a 1.0 ratio. Uh, a debt service of 1.35 is much more desirable. Nick, can you help me give some examples of how the, that service, uh, ratio is calculated? Uh, yes. So typically what we look at is your, uh, your net income is what's really important about this um, and understanding how to calculate what this is. Uh, so typically how you do that is, let me get it here, sorry. Uh, you take your net operating income and divide it by the total debt service. So what we look at as total debt services, how much debt do you have to repay over that span of 12 months? Um, so, you know, I can get uh, an example here. Uh, if a business has a net operating income of $100,000, that is after taxes, after paying, that's your net income. That's the income your, your company actually made after everything that year. If you had a net in income of $100,000 and a debt, a total debt service of $60,000 that year, as in you have... $60,000 you're paying on for that year. Uh, the debt service coverage ratio would be approximately 1.67. Does anyone have questions on that? I can, I can try and explain a little bit better. It's a little bit so, difficult uh, to fully this, understand. Just basically, so in order to borrow the, the, the borrow money from the bank, we're looking that we, we're, we wanna see that you have a dollar 35 cents for every dollar that you wanna borrow from the banks to break it down in simple terms. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, I did have one question on that. What if I don't get the amount I need? Am I able to go and obtain another loan or what do you suggest I do? Mm, good question. So if you're not able to borrow the amount that you need from the bank, because uh, the bank typically looks at the capacity of yeah. what, so basically what you would qualify for. Um, at, at that point, I, you are able to go to other places to look uh, for the balance that you do need. But then, but knowing that, 
you know, the bank already knows what you're able to qualify for. So yeah. it's going to be uh, slim. Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, let, let me jump in there. I mean, the other thing that lenders will also look at is um, lenders won't make a loan for the sake of making a loan. So if you've applied for X because you really need X, but you only qualify for Y, sometimes a lender won't make a, a, a loan at all because part of the money uh, sometimes um, won't help. So um, a lot of lenders won't look to um, put you in a position whereby it could make things worse um, in, in the future. So uh, that is something to be aware of. Um, it's a bit like, you know, if you're wanting to buy a car and a lender will only come up with sort of um, a certain percentage of it, then uh, you'd either have to, you know, relook at, at what you're wanting to um, um, to achieve or um, change your expectations. So uh, that is something to bear in mind that a lender, you know, um, if, if it doesn't fit, sometimes a lender, you know, won't make an offer whatsoever if they don't believe it'll genuinely help you. Okay. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Next. All right, guys. So uh, what if I'm having a hard time getting approved for credit? That And that goes into mm -hmm. uh, the question we just recently had, very similar. There are many reasons why you may have trouble getting approved for a loan. For example, your new business may not have established a solid financial history uh, or may uh, lack enough documentation to convince a lender of your credit worthiness. You may even have a low credit score due to some past financial mishaps. If these, if these are pr problems sound familiar, don't lose hope. In addition to alternative lenders, there are other programs available that are designed specifically to help small businesses succeed. So guys, what we're talking about here is what if I don't get approved for the credit? Don't totally get discouraged. Uh, in addition to the alternative lenders we talked about previously, business to business, uh, peer to peer, there are other uh, uh, lenders that are uh, or programs out there that can help. And we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Um, so let's go to the next slide there, Jimmy. Here are a couple of the lenders in addition to uh, what we already discussed. Community Development Financial Institutions, uh, also known as CDFIs, uh, offer U.S. Department of Treasury funded loans in low-income communities or with underserved populations. Uh, community Development Financial Institutions, or CDFIs, are one that a lot of the banks actually work with. We work with a few ourselves uh, that, if for any reason, um, we do not are not able to lend to a business owner, we actually uh, are able to send your, pro, your information and you over to these lenders uh, that have special programs to help you get that lending needed. Uh, another one is a nonprofit organization called SCORE. Uh, it's a partner of the uh, Small Business Administration, or SBA, and offers free mentoring services to small business owners. Mentors are, are volunteer experts who are committed to sharing their knowledge and experience. Um, and then, of course, we have the SBA loans. So in addition to the conventional, they call, or normal business loans, we are able to go through the Small Business Administration to be able to get that loan approved as well uh, in some cases. Um, so does anyone have any questions about these three items? No, no questions. You kind of answered it if you would refer them over to a CDFI that you work with. So yes. you kind of answer that. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And then a lot of times, guys, when you go to a lender, they're not always just going to say, hey, sorry, we can't approve the loan. We'll see you later. No, they're going to want to help you. Uh, we as lenders want to make sure our business owners are able to get the financing they need. Um, and if we're not able to do so, we're going to be able to uh, refer you to a another lender or programs that we have established uh, to be able to help you as well. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so key points about obtaining business credit. There are a lot of important factors to think about uh, as you go through the process of obtaining business credit. Here are a few tips to consider. Maintain strong financial records. Guys, this is extremely important. A lot of times when you go and you, you wanna apply for a business loan and the lender says, okay, well, here's what I need, and this, 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 and this, and you don't have those things, it's only going to delay you from being able to apply for that lend, that, that credit you need. Um, so making sure you're on top of your taxes, making sure you're on top of your income statement and balance sheet for that current year, uh, 
if, if you, for any reason, I know there's an option that the IRS allows you to defer your taxes to later on in the year. If you do that, make sure you have that copy of the approval to do so, and then you can show us that as a lender. Uh, but lenders will access various financial statements when you apply and make sure you have your documentation in order. Uh, the next one would be lead by example. Remember that your personal financial history may be considered when applying for financing. So guys, when you apply and your business for, for any reason is not able to obtain the lending by itself, we will look at your personal uh, financial history and not just your personal credit score because we do run that anyways uh, every time we run for a business credit. But what this means is what I talked about in the very beginning is uh, your um, overall uh, uh cash flow for your business and your personal world cash flow or global cash flow. Um, we will take into effect your personal income that you make from all of diff, you know, various different places. Um, and if we do that, we are going to take into account your personal debt. So you got to make sure you're allowing yourself on the personal side to be financially sound as well. And the third and final thing is don't give up. If a traditional lender does not approve your application, look into building up your credit worthiness and reach out for support from small business organizations such as uh, the CDFIs we talked about, the Small Business Administration. Those places are available to help you with understanding how to build your credit up, build yourself up as a credit worthy person, um, and to be able to teach you those things. I think it's really important that uh, the last part where you don't give up, even though if you're not bankable to the banks or other credit unions right now, the CVFIs are there to help you uh, to, to coach you on how to be bankable. So once you've established yourself, uh, you got your credit history going, you know, then you know how, how the game works. I think it's a good, good exercise or a good practice that, you know, you work with the CVFIs first and then, maybe a year or two down the line, then you will be bankable. So it's very important that you don't give up. Great question. Great ad there, Jimmy. Yeah, do we have any uh, questions on these guys? Uh, no, no questions on those right now. All right. Well, Jimmy's going to post up here our contact information uh, once we get it attached here. Uh, but guys, thanks so much for joining. This is actually a lot of fun for us to do and be able to talk to you about uh, your business and how to obtain uh, lending for your business. Um, so once we get that up, you guys can take note of our information. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and we are very glad to be able to help and uh, are available to talk about your business and how we can uh, help you with business lending. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And those that are watching, if you want to set up an appointment or have other questions regarding these topics, reach out to them. Specifically, reach out to them. They'll be more than happy to assist you. Screen, Take a screenshot of your screen right now to copy that information. Um, if you want to reach out to us, we can connect you to them as well. Is there anything else you guys want to add to our audience? Perhaps any tips or anything else you can share? Um, if not, then thank you all so much for joining. Thanks, guys. Look forward to working with you guys. Looking forward to it as well, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks guys. So much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gareth, thank Jimmy, and Nick for joining us here today and all of our friends at HSBC. We're really grateful for you guys and bringing this information to our community. We hope to have you again. Um, but with that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.